chairman of the House Homeland Committee, Committee on Homeland Security, Republican Congressman Michael McCall of Texas. Mr. Chairman, good to have you with us here good morning. in New York. Good morning. I know you're here for a solemn anniversary for September 11th. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the news at hand. Back to back in your state, we had one big hurricane in Harvey, another one now Irma hitting Florida. What is the strain that puts on FEMA, the strain that puts on the federal government? Uh, it's an enormous uh, financial strain. As you know, we appropriated $15.5 billion for the disaster relief fund uh, just to keep it solvent. We, we saw Irma coming. Uh, the good news is the money is there to help save lives. Uh, Texas has moved past that uh, search and rescue phase now into rebuilding. Florida is in the search and rescue phase as I speak. Uh, I talked to Coast Guard uh, Commandant yesterday and FEMA Administrator at their headquarters. Right now is when they're going to the Florida Keys to save lives. Uh, the USS Abraham Lincoln is out there, the aircraft carrier. Um, and I worry because about 10,000 people uh, did not evacuate the Florida Keys. So right now they're in the process of trying to find them and save them. Yeah, so obviously we have still a life-threatening situation, too, uh, with the flooding that's occurring in the Jacksonville area. But I had read that, that FEMA was going through about a half a billion dollars a day, so mm -hmm. that uh, money you voted on is going to be gone. We just talked to Senator Bill Nelson, the senior senator from Florida. He said, look, we're going to need another emergency supplemental. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen now? You <clears throat> know, as well as anybody, what the people of Florida are going to be facing. Yeah, very similar to what uh, my home state uh, faced, and I do think, I agree with the senator, we will have another supplemental. That was just a down payment to keep the disaster relief fund afloat uh, and these uh, community development block grants that we uh, will help rebuild, and I think we'll see those take place in Florida soon, uh, but that was a down payment, and uh, we're going to have a larger uh, supplemental, I think, in the next few weeks uh, to, to pay for this. Uh, we have to provide assistance to these people who are hurting and to help them rebuild. I, we don't have to get mired in politics on a day like this when this is going on, but I do want to ask you your impression of for four Texas Republicans, your congressman, your fellow congressman who didn't vote for the relief legislation in their own state. How do you explain that vote? I know you voted for it, but how do you explain a no vote there? Well, I don't want to uh, judge them. I can only judge myself and my conscience. Uh, when I had people dying and hurting in my home state, it was my uh, duty and moral obligation to help them. And I felt that that vote was a vote of conscience to help people uh, in my state and also now in Florida. Uh, I think that's what Americans do, and I think it's unconscionable to vote against something what did like they that. What did, I, I'm genuinely curious, what did they tell you? Why did they vote no for relief in their own state? I think uh, you know having to raise the debt ceiling was probably their big issue. And, and the fact is, you know, Mick Mulvaney, who's the director of OMB, who was a Freedom Caucus guy, when he served with us, and it told us point blank that you could not appropriate disaster relief if you didn't raise the debt ceiling. So we were stuck with that choice. Uh, what do you do in that choice? Do you just stand on principle and vote no? Um, and I question that principle, or do you vote to, to help people back in your home state uh, who are hurting really badly? Do so you I, have any you know. questions that the people of Florida are going to get the help that they need, or is this going to be a fight? Oh, I, I, I don't think you're going to see some Texas versus Florida thing. This is going to be an American issue. And I think, if anything, it bring, it'll bring the Texas and Florida delegations together, uh, fighting together for that funding. So how are things going? I'm curious what you're hearing from folks. I mean, obviously, you guys, again, are already in the stage of people have gone back to their homes. They're seeing what they have to do. People deciding how to rebuild, where to rebuild. There are insurance issues that they're facing. How are things going, and what are the things that you have learned based on what's happened to your state so very recently that you can say to the folks in Florida to help them? Well, I think a couple of things, and I was with the FEMA administrator, uh, the, the lessons learned in a positive way were that we had a president and governor who were working hand in hand. We had an advance uh, uh, declaration of disaster, so that means FEMA can come in in advance with prepositioned assets to respond as, as swiftly uh, as possible. I think that was a, made a huge difference. Also, the difference between Katrina and today is, is social media. I, I saw on social media an, an amazing response, uh, not only to where the shelters were, but where they could bring the food and water to clothing. Uh, people, there were so many people, the bright thing, story of that tragic hurricane, and this one too, is the compassion that we have as Americans for each other. And I, I was very touched by that, and I think social media 
help bring that together. Yeah, there was a call put out for nurses and just they were overwhelmed yeah. with calls, which was wonderful. From far outside Florida even. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, you'll walk off this set right now and head <laughs> down south of here in Manhattan to the site where nearly 3,000 Americans were, were murdered mm -hmm. uh, 16 years ago today on the September 11th. What does the day mean to you? Um, and at 846, we of course will take the moment of silence, the moment when United, excuse me, American Airlines Flight 11 hit the North Tower. Well, it was the largest terrorist attack on American soil. I'll, I'll never forget that day. Uh, we were talking earlier how some people, uh, it's, it's a living history for me, and, and for some of our children, it's a textbook history, and I think it's important that they remember this day and, and what happened and what we can do to stop this from ever happening in the United States again. We've made a lot of progress since 9-11. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security was created after 9-11. My committee was created as a result of 9-11. So everything we do on the committee and in the department is to make sure we, we can prevent another 9-11 from happening. So it's a very solemn uh, moment uh, that we reflect on. Uh, and remember uh, those who lost their lives and never forget. Obviously, the wars that were launched after that are now entering their <clears throat> 16th year, in the case of Afghanistan anyway, 14 for, for Iraq. Is America safer today than it was on September 10th, 2001? I, I think our intelligence apparatus, our homeland security apparatus has improved. I don't think a large-scale operation like 9-11 could happen again. I think. Europe is in a more pre-9-11 position. They're getting, you know, more attacks. Uh, but the threat is still alive and well. It's, it's evolved. It's changed. And I think the Internet has a lot to do with this. Bin Laden was uh, caves and couriers. We have a new generation. They're very savvy on the Internet, exploit it to recruit, train, and radicalize people wherever they are. And uh, it's wherever they are. Those are the messages coming out of Iraq and Syria are not to necessarily come there, but kill where you are. And that's the threat level that we're in inspiration instead of direct direction. Okay. Chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, Congressman Michael Call, we appreciate you stopping by this morning. No, thanks so much for and having can me. I just hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.